a test for lighting and framing. Hello. There goes Dr. Livingston. I thought she was going to co-host with me, but she's camera shy. She found boxes to rub her head against. So this is what happened when I worked on my bobbin. The blue thread that you see on this side, this is the top thread that's threaded through the needle. And on this side, you can see the brown thread that was threaded up through the bobbin. So the bobbin tension is way too tight. Um, every single one of these lines of stitching, um, these are changing the tension on the bobbin thread and these are changing the tension on the top until I could, this is like as close as I could get it to being even and it, it, it's just not good for sewing. The fabric is all puckering up. That will make bad seams. If your thread is under too much tension then the seam is liable to give way more easily. Um, so I have put on order a new bobbin case that will look like this in case you care. So the bobbin goes in here, the thread goes around and amongst these little metal pieces, and those metal pieces uh, push on each side of the thread to create the tension. And apparently when my bobbin thread ran out last week, the week before, apparently something went wrong with the bobbin case. So I've ordered a new bobbin case. Uh, the company I ordered it from also had like guaranteed brother bobbins and so I ordered some more bobbins for my machine and some more needles for my machine because I know I don't change them out enough. And so this week, or at least until the part gets here and hopefully it will solve the problem, until then I'm doing hand sewing. So when I ordered that black cotton thread that turned out to be wool. I also ordered a roll of this uh, DMC Cotton Pearl, which is um, a real nice thread, shiny and smooth, but way, way thick, not in a bad way. And um, anyway, I'm uh, doing some test stitching like I did with the wool and then I'm, I'm also doing some test stitching with this pearl cotton. I want to see if the pearl cotton alone is going to be thick enough to give me the effect that I want. Or if I'm going to have to use the pearl cotton over a base of the wool thread. So that's what I'm going to be working on as I talk to you all this week. I, uh, I like hand embroidery. It's... Um, Oh, I just like it. I've been walking down to the gate and back most every day. There's always an owl down at the bottom of the hill and there's always owl noises and motion down in the mott which is slightly creepy. So far not actually scary just unusual activity. Other than Telling you that the song stuck in my head today is the theme from the old television show Bonanza. I, I don't know why. Why would you ask me why? I don't know why my brain does anything that it does. But today it's been Bonanza. <laughs> and um, I hope that by telling you what the song is that stuck in my head. Hopefully it'll get stuck in your head and I can move on to something else. And that usually is the way it goes. Here I am still stitching with my Black Cruel thread. I wasn't really satisfied with how it was working. Um, I put a bunch of stitches on my fabric and I was doing a satin stitch over the wool to see if the, uh, the cotton purl would give the really shiny effect I was going for, but it, it's not doing it. 
I need to either get some mercerized cotton or maybe some rayon. Rayon has a real super shiny finish, almost like silk, and that might give the effect that I want. Because I want the, the satin stitches that I'm making, I'm making letters, and I want the satin stitches to stand proud from the fabric. So I might need to get something super shiny and maybe put a layer of felt under them or just a, a thickness of maybe flannel to make the, the letters stand proud, stand up from the fabric. But anyway, today I'm just stitching. My uh, friends, the weird dreams have come back. I told you about, I used to have lucid dreams where like I knew I was dreaming and I could decide what would happen in the dream and I could control the dream and I, I can't do that anymore. Uh, but one of the things that happens when I dream is that I know that I'm dreaming. So I had another weird dream. In my dream again, there were owls down in the mott and in my dream I walk down the hill to the trees and I see three white owls, white, pure white owls in the trees. And then when I look down from the trees and into the trees, I see a ghost. <laughs> uh, just a gray, smoky, foggy figure. And in my dream, I know I'm dreaming. And I say to myself, what a crap ghost. <laughs> Like, what a crap ghost. I don't even believe in ghosts. And this is the best my subconscious could come up with. Is like the classic trope of the, the spooky, misty ghost in the distance. God. Oh. So, I don't know why there is a ghost haunting my dreams. I know they're why there's not a ghost haunting me in real life because there's no such thing as ghosts in real life. So I guess that's the only way to get to me with a ghost is in my dream. I found a video on YouTube that I think is going to help me um, solve my tension problem. At first I was like, oh no, I ordered the thing for nothing. But I don't think it's going to be for nothing because I think... Everything that I did to the bobbin case, trying to figure out what was wrong with it, probably wrecked it. And it will never be able to get the correct tension again. But when the new bobbin case gets here, I'm going to see if the new bobbin case works. And if the new bobbin case doesn't perform any better than the old one, then I'm going to try the fix that I saw on University of YouTube. And other than that, the only thing you need to know this Wednesday is what song is stuck in Spike's head. You're in luck because it's some classical music. You're in luck if you go look it up and listen to a lovely song. And you're in luck if you don't go listen to this lovely song because then you won't get my earworm stuck in your head. The humoresque number seven by Antonine Dvorak was originally written as a short and pleasant piano piece. It has been orchestrated and adapted for many different arrangements of instrumentation and um, you'll enjoy it. It's a pretty song. Go and listen to it and you just might get it stuck in your head. Which of all the songs I've had stuck in my head lady, lately, this is one of the better ones. Anyway, love y'all. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm working in the laundry room today. I don't, and I'm working on a picture. I'm putting down some ink and some color before I start sewing and stitching to enhance it. Yeah, yeah, guess who that is? Yeah, that's, uh, that's my ghost buddy. So, yesterday... I was telling good old Robert Bob about my dream about the ghost in the mott and about how lame and low rent my ghost in the mott was in my dream because it was just this misty shadow white 
shadow thing, like, I don't know, you'd get better special effects on Scooby-Doo. So I'm telling him about the silly dream and the ghost and the mott, and he said, was it a man? And I said, I don't really know what it was. It was just a white shapeless blob, like I've been saying. And he said, well, my Uncle Diesel, his ashes were spread down there. And I'm like, what? And he said, yeah, his ashes are spread down there. He and my dad grew up together here on this place. And, um... He passed away here, too. And I said, down in the mott, here in the house? He said, no, it, it was farther south on the property. Uncle Diesel had come over to the house for uh, Robert's birthday, and he brought him a really excellent set of kids' books. Back in the 60s when we were little, um, companies would publish these like really fancy editions of children's books like with fancy hard covers that looked like fake leather and gold leafing on the edges. They were pretty cool. And his uncle gave him a set of these books for, I think his seventh or eighth birthday. Family had come out for a party and stuff, and um, Uncle Diesel had drunk too much, which apparently he was known to do. And so instead of driving back to town, he slept on the couch. Day in the morning, he went out for a walk, and he'd been gone for quite a while, and Rob's mom is like, you need to go find Uncle Diesel and tell him to come in for lunch. And when he went out to find Uncle Diesel, um, Uncle Diesel had died while taking a walk. And... <laughs> Bob said it didn't traumatize him or anything. You know, when, when you're seven or eight, anybody over 40 seems, you know, decrepit and ancient. And uh, there was no trauma. No, he wasn't attacked by an animal or an owl. Uh, he wasn't murdered or shot or anything. He had just been walking and it looked like he just fell over. Maybe a sudden heart attack or something. He, he showed me a picture of Uncle Diesel, old picture, taken before even Robert was born, taken in the 50s or something, and it's just a white guy standing out in the field in a white shirt, white colored pants. He's got on a big cowboy hat. He's It doesn't look like a western shirt or a button down, it's just a long sleeve shirt with the sleeves rolled up, and he's just standing there in the picture looking at the camera, big hat on and shadow on his face. So of course last night I, I dreamt about my uh, friendly ghost again, except now it's the ghost of Uncle Diesel in my dreams. I am so suggestible and influenceable that I am just downright embarrassed about it. <laughs> But I knew that you would understand. So, I, um, I know, I could have gone to just take a picture of the mott, but instead I'm, I'm drawing and stitching a picture of the mott with the ghost of the now named ghost, Uncle Diesel, in the picture. <laughs> I'm going to add some stitches for more color and depth. Because any photo that I went down there to take, of course, wouldn't have the ghost in it. Because the ghost is only in my dreams and in my mind. Because there's no such thing as ghosts. Just like Scooby-Doo always taught us. Other than that, I'm still waiting for my sewing machine part. And, um... And so, of course, what everybody wants to know is what is the earworm of the day? And the earworm of the day is Come On Baby, Light My Fire by The Doors. Enjoy. I love y'all. Bye-bye. Another test for lighting and framing.
think I like this one a lot. Okay, y'all. <clears throat> this is what I was working on yesterday when I was talking to y'all. I've done putting all of my marks and ink and such. Um, there's good old Uncle Diesel haunting my dreams. That's the road I walk on that takes me past the Mott. Trees down here is a bunch of Yupon and uh, blackberries. And over here is um, a mesquite tree that overhangs. <clears throat> I have a bunch of uh, thread that I'm going through and adding to my own thread box. Uh, they were some of my dear mother-in-law's threads and we found them when we were cleaning out a window seat. So I'm dusting them off and putting them in with my own threads and getting things organized. Organized threads. <clears throat> and then I'm going to make some stitches onto the picture. Yeah, I don't believe in ghosts, but I believe that if I draw a picture of Uncle Diesel, he will go away and leave me alone if he knows what's good for him. And I've been picking out colored threads to sew with. I have some embroidery floss too. So I've got the basic picture sketch out and the, the stitches are going to add texture color, contrast, all that kind of good fun stuff. So, yeah, things have gotten very interesting in my dreams. Uncle Diesel is in my dreams. So yeah, after Robert Bob told me about his uncle, um, that is the shape that the ghost took in my dreams. Last night in my dreams, I was, uh, walking down the hill uh, like I do when I take my walk and uh, there were the owls and there was the ghost just staring at me from in the trees and um, in my dream I got, I got scared of the ghost and I turned around to go back up the hill and he started following me and I turned around and I said, get down, get back. And he got down onto the ground and turned into a snake. A very real looking corporeal white snake. Um, and then this owl came down out of the trees and swooped down and picked the snake up and went away with it. Um owls in real life do hunt snakes. I am kind of glad that the owl in the dream took that snake away. <clears throat> but then later in the, e in the night, I had a very, very similar dream. I've walked down the hill, I'm standing near the mott, and I can see the man's ghost, Uncle Diesel's ghost, standing in the trees. I stood there and looked at him. And then here come the owls. They swoop in and they start attacking him. Like they attacked me in my dream. But it's all three of the owls. And they're screeching. And they're clawing at him. But he's a ghost and they can't touch him. He goes away. He disappears. I do not know what these owls have against Uncle Diesel. I know he had quite a reputation <clears throat> as a fellow who liked to uh, drive fast and drink hard, and he liked pretty women. I don't, I don't know what the owls would have against him. I, as far as I know, he wasn't much of a hunter. He, I guess he went fishing. I don't know why he's bothering me in my dreams and I, I don't know what the owls have to do with it.
the other thing is I'm stitching up Diesel so I can like tell him to go away, get out of my life. The only other thing happening around here, besides ghosts and weird animals, is the song in my head. Today's earworm is The Fool on the Hill by the Beatles. So, if you have not heard The Fool on the Hill in a few moons, uh, go and listen to it. And the part that's particularly going through my head is the flute solo. This weekend, Robert and I are going to walk down the hill and he's going to show me where in the moth they scattered Uncle Diesel's ashes. And, um... We're going to walk around on the property, and he's going to show me where he found Uncle Diesel's body. And uh, what really strikes me about all this is how unfazed Robert seems to have been. I guess growing up in the country, death is a natural part of life, and uh, everything and everyone dies. And the fact that he found Uncle Diesel while he was out on his own just doesn't seem to bother him at all. Um, enjoy the earworm and the flute solo and I love y'all and I will see you next week. Love, Spike.